Hello everybody and welcome to my video on how to assemble the 5119 camera's 410 diptych. All right, this camera is going to come with everything that you have to have to assemble it. Uh, there, there is going to be some number of rubber bands in here that I haven't worked out the exact quantity of yet. And that will be to help you hold everything together when you assemble. You're also going to get a 35 millimeter film cassette holder that has some nuts and bolts in it. These are standard metric five 25 millimeter nut, uh, bolts and nuts, uh, standard thread, uh, thread pitch. You're going to get a bottle of tight bond three glue and you're going to get a disposable brush. I'm going to be for the purposes of this video using a reusable brush because I put a lot of these to, I've put a bunch of these together and I don't want to just throw away a brush every time. It will also help to have a 4x10 film holder and a couple of 4x5 film holders because those are the formats this camera uses and some frog tape, masking tape, or something like that which can easily be removed because this will help when it comes to assembling the felt part of your camera. So we'll set some of this stuff that we don't yet need off to the side and the first thing that we're going to do is inventory. We're going to unpackage an inventory. And if your sticker comes off cleanly enough, you could even reuse it for something else like just sticking onto your camera if you so choose. There we go. And here is what comes with your kit. These two parts here are called the 4x5 light guards or guardrails or whatever you want to call them. I don't really have an official name for them. These go on the film, film back. This is your data plate. It's one of the camera sides. This is a felt. The longer pieces of felt are for inside of the sides of the camera. This is your other camera side with the bubble level felt. This is the pinhole. This is the front of your camera. What you're looking at right now is the front of the camera. Your camera will probably come packaged like this because uh, I think I put them together differently when I did the actual backing cameras, or the assembly of those. This is the felt lining for the, for the front of the camera. This is the bottom of the camera. You can tell because it has a tripod socket. This is the top of the camera, which has the bubble level. These are the two felt liners for the top and bottom of the camera. These thick pieces are wool gaskets, which are what the film holders will rest up against. There is a specific way they go together, and we'll see that when we do this assembly. Also, uh, these, these edges here are a little bit thicker so that these should not break during transit. You will get three lengths of shock cord. This is three millimeter or one eighth inch shock cord. There's two four inches and one nine inch length. That's from the knot to the end. And I'll show you how to use these later in the video. If you ever need to replace these, they're easy to find and get. You will have these two holders here. These will have a piece of paper on one side of them. You can take that off now. Same with these. You can take the paper off of those right now. And these are what hold your film holder in place. Then you'll have four thin strips of suede. And these are liners for this piece right here. The wool gasket also goes on this piece. This is a, um, a stopper for your 4x5 film holders. Shutter assembly, these three pieces right here. This is the part that your film holders rest up against. And this is your exposure calculator. We're going to start by assembling the exposure calculator just to get this done and out of the way. You'll notice there's an opening here along the bottom. Mine is a little bit messed up, but yours are not. There are going to be two little X's next to your rectangular square, a rectangular hole. This part fits in there and these wings cover the X's. So you know you've put it together correctly if, it, if the wings on this part cover those X's. So we're just going to grab a little bit of glue. We're just going to put it on the ends of this part right here. There we 
to go. And we'll just do a little bead along each side. I'm just gonna slide that down into there. And now we're gonna turn it over and this will give it some time to set up. You can also, if you want to be extra, extra certain that this is not going anywhere, because this is a mandatory piece if you're going to shoot this as a diptych camera, just run some glue like that. This part of the back of the camera, you'll only see when you take it off to load film. So uh, I don't care if it's ugly personally, however you want it to look is up to you. But this is going to absolutely assure that that piece isn't going anywhere. And to me, that's more important. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab these rails. And we're going, they go in like this. So, I want you to see how these look. Where they are at right now, this is correct. So, if you hold, your, hold it to the side like this and you can see that this end lines up with that corner and the same up here, that's correct. If you have put them on and these ends do not line up correctly, that's incorrect. So, we want it to do that. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab some of our rubber bands. So here, your camera is going to include four of these thick rubber bands. These are size 64 rubber bands and you need four of these. So we're gonna set these off to the side while we do some gluing. Just gonna run a little bead on each side. Like that, we're gonna take the excess glue, we're gonna put it on the notches, on the sides of the notches in the guardrails, just like that. And we're gonna put some down at the ends of each guardrail as well. The long pieces like this, the long skinny pieces, have had some challenges with warping. Uh, the latest batch seems not to be that bad, but it's a good idea to glue these up the whole length just to help prevent warping from being an issue. All right, we're gonna put these into their notches. Gonna double up this rubber band, I think. Nope, that's not the way it goes. This is just a single. Wrap around each end. Like that, oops. Don't want that to happen. Don't want that to fold over. And this is where the 4x10 holder, by the way, that I suggested, or 4x5 holder comes in handy. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slide it right into this. If you have two of them, that's even better. Just to uh, put two into the, uh, right into diptych orientation. But if you don't have a second one on you, like I don't, just slide it right in the middle, and that's gonna be okay. Three. And four. It is definitely preferred to have two of these to, uh, to mount in here, because these, these guardrails are for your four by five shooting. So at any rate, what we can do next is we can just stash these two pieces with it and set this off to the side for the glue to set up. Next part we need is this. Now there are some lines etched in one side and some lines etched in the other, and I feel like this one is backwards. It is. So on yours, there are gonna be four lines. That represents the top of the camera up here. So I had these etched backwards, which is gonna make this just a hair difficult. But the way that these work is that the felt gasket is gonna go here with the lines. 
it's going to line up with the lines, okay? Now, the triangle on the felt gasket extends a little bit beyond the top of the wood it is supposed to. The overall length of the wool gasket is the same as this overall length here, just because of the way that the geometry fit together. The geometry on this part was one of the hardest things I had to design. Actually, it was the hardest thing I had to design. So, so the, these long pieces are going to go like that with these two cutouts going where the, three the four lines are and this one cutout going where the single line is at. Okay? This is where the, for you where this is the top of your camera. These lines represent the light proofing, uh, the, the light seal for the 4x10 and for the 4x5 cameras. Okay? So, then the other parts are going to be two identical trapezoids that are going to fit right here like this. So, in other cameras, this is the first thing that we assemble. In this camera, it's the last. But I want you to understand what these parts are because if you have bought multiple cameras, this is a different assembly method than the others. So we're going to take the wool and the shock cord because we don't need them yet and set them off to the side. Now we're going to flip this over and if you have paper on the back of yours, you're going to take it off. Okay, so assembling this is fairly straightforward because these parts are going to go together exactly the same way, top and bottom, but I'm going to show you before we glue it up how it goes. These skinny parts go right along the bottom here, and they are the same width as that the, the wood here, and they just fit right in there. Then the longer parts go on the sides, and they just nest right in between the skinny parts like that. Okay. We're going to turn these paper side over. Be very judicious with your glue. You don't want to have a lot of glue in this part because if you do, it can cause the wood to warp. And that's going to be an issue later if that happens. Not a huge issue with this piece, but it won't, it won't make your life easy. So whichever way you assemble these doesn't matter long or skinny first. If you put the long ones, the fat and long ones on first, you want the top of them to align with this edge of the wood on the inside. Just going to run it down like that. That's as close to perfect as is needed. I'm going to repeat with the skinny pieces. This one is a little bit wonky because I had to hand cut it, having accidentally destroyed the one that was supposed to be here. There we go. And the, the skinny pieces are identical, so it doesn't matter which one goes top or bottom, by the way. There we go, just like that. Oops, that was a bit more than intended, but that's uh, not the end of the world. Just try to spread this out a bit more evenly. There we go. Going to grab the last piece of suede. And we're set. Now, if you do have a little bit of a gap at the ends of these, that's A-OK. -okay. This is an internal facing component, so it's not something that's used. This suede here is not used for light proofing. This suede is used for internal reflection elimination. There we go. Get those pressed nice and flat. And we're going to set this off to the side to dry while we work on the next parts of the camera. So here are the, the top and the bottom. And these get done exactly the same way. Now the difference is that the top has this felt here over this tripod socket. This has some tape. With the felt, you can put a bunch of glue on here if you want to. And it's not going to be an issue at all because you're gluing it to the felt, not to the wood. You don't want to have tons of glue on the wood because that can cause the wood to warp just a little bit. Or more than a little bit if you use too much glue. So we're going to put a big dollop of glue right there. There 
There we go. It's a little bit more than I meant, but it's gonna be okay. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna line this up. Now, as you can see that front pro part that protrudes, this is the same width as the inside of those notches. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to line those up and we're going to then line up this back with those two cutouts there. Just like that. And yeah, that's what we want. I'm gonna press it into place. Now we're gonna peel the paper off of the felt. or suede rather. And completely mess up the placement. All right. I'm gonna set, next thing we need to do is tape this piece up. The reason we're gonna tape this up is so that when we do the um, fit up a little bit later, of the whole camera, the felt's not in the way while we, while we do the fit up. And we can also have this out of the way when we put the final glue beads into the camera body. So this is why you want to have some masking tape if you've got it available. Now we can set this off to the side. We're gonna do the same thing with the top, but using less glue because we don't have that big thing of felt in the middle, we just have a little bit of tape. Masking tape it up and we'll be right back to work on the front of the camera. All right, so here's the front of the camera. Now, the sides here, this is the front itself. And you might notice, by the way, that I have already gone to the to, and polyurethane this, so this is a little bit shinier and, and darker than what you're likely to receive. But um, at any rate, if you're gonna do that, protect the pinhole and polyurethane it before you assemble. Same thing with stain or paint. Always protect the pinhole. So this is the front. On the front of the camera, the pinhole is recessed. We're going to flip this over and we're going to install the felt. Now, the felt, if we have lined it up correctly, what we do is we're going to put it this way and hold it up to the light to make sure everything works. Okay, there's a little notch on this side that goes toward the top of the camera. If you put it towards the bottom, the holes won't line up and you're going to have a problem or they won't line up and you're gonna have a problem. So you know you've done this correctly if those three holes line up with the three holes in the wood and that notch is at what's gonna be the top. Kind of indistinguishable, but there is a shorter, a shorter span here from, from these two protrusions to the edge than on the bottom. Minimal glue use because we don't want to risk the wood warping. So that's pretty light. The big thing is making sure that we get it out to the edges as that will help us later in assembly. I'm gonna flip this over quickly. And we're gonna press down nice and hard on that. And might need to reposition just slightly. But there we go. We've assembled the felt, uh, put glued the felt onto the front of the camera. Now we can set this off to the side. Here's the so one of the sides of the camera. Now, as you can see, there's this big gluey mess here. And that's because when you ins insert your film holders, they're going to insert like this. So a little bit of an I would have designed this slightly differently if I had realized this was gonna happen, but this is Gorilla Glue here. It's gonna do a really good job of protecting your camera and your film holders from and keeping them light tight with 
what repeated insertions and removals of film holders over the years. So we're going to assemble this in a, basically the same manner that we've been seeing. And what, the way that this goes on is fairly similar. We want to align to the, to the rest of these. We want to align the, this rear line with these four holes. And then this protrusion here is the same width as this space from top to bottom. So we know that this is aligned correctly. If, if these edges meet and the felt is lined up with these four holes like that. Okay, so next we're gonna grab a little bit of glue. That's more than enough right there. I actually went a little bit further out to the side than I really want. You wanna to try to have your glue stop here and here if possible, because that will help us when it comes time to folding this over in just a moment. We're just gonna kind of paint this into a triangle. There we go. Flip that over and give it a good press. Not, not, not a good enough press, it, it seems, just there. Make sure everything's properly aligned one last time because this is your last chance to do that. Now we're going to tape this up in the same manner that we did the top and bottom. And now we're gonna do the same on this piece. All right, now it's time to start doing the actual camera assembly now that all of the felt liners are in place. So we're gonna start here with the front of the camera and we're going to install the shutter. Three nuts, three bolts. Ah, here's the shutter mechanism. What we're gonna do is we're going to flip this over and there's no hole here. And that's so that the lollipop can work as a hinge. So if you hold, I'll do this one upside down. So if you hold the, the shutter mechanism like this where the holes are in this alignment, the lollipop goes there and the half moon goes there, just like that. Next, what we're gonna do is grab the shutter. There's a front and a back for this. The front has a smooth finish between the metal filter ring and the shutter. The back has a valley between the filter ring and the shutter. So you wanna have the smooth finish facing outward. I'm gonna put the three bolts through here and we're going to then align them with the holes in the shutter mechanism. What you want to do is just feed those bolts right through and flip this over. Grab a nut, and I'm holding the bolts in place with my fingers on the other side of the camera, by the way. We're going to grab a nut and just thread it until it stops. You might ask why I don't have lock nuts or washers. That's because the felt's going to do the job of both, and with lock nuts, you can't really adjust them. This type of nut will allow you to adjust the shutter tension as it breaks in over time and to your specific preferred tension to give you the resistance that you want when you're using it. Now we can flip it over and we can see that the shutter's moving a lot. This is a little rough because of the finish that I put onto the camera that's just gonna break in over time. Same as the case with yours. So I'm gonna tight, I'm gonna hold the nut and I'm gonna tighten the bolt here just a little bit. That's too tight, we'll come back to that. But I'm gonna do the same with the other two because they're a little bit loose right now. And doing this will compress the felt on the other side so that it can work as that washer and lock nut. Now I'm gonna loosen the shutter bolt, if it'll let me. There it goes. Get in there.
Every one of these is just a hair different. So it takes a little bit of doing to find the exact right tension for them. All right, we're getting there and with time that will work itself into, um, that will work itself out so that it will be a lot smoother. And next what we're gonna do is start assembling the camera's, um, the camera's body. Okay, so the way that these are gonna go together, this is the top, we can tell because of the notch. So, we'll start with the side that has the data on it. And we know that this is going to go over here because this is gonna be the top. Put that on that side. It means this goes here. Oops. This is the top that goes, it's gonna go up here. So the top should, will fit like that. And then this is gonna be the bottom. It's gonna fit like that. Okay, next let's grab some glue. We're just going to paint the sides here and the sides of those notches with glue. If you want to, you can also do this. It can be helpful. And now this part just slides on like that. And we're going to let this sit just like that for a minute until we keep work, as we keep working. Next part I'm gonna do is the bottom. So the bottom is only gonna come back to here, so I accidentally actually goofed doing that. So we're gonna put some glue there and then on the notches on the front of the camera. So we'll put glue here. Now we know this assembles that way. We're also going to put some glue on these little wings here and along the front. Now again, this part doesn't have to be the prettiest because a lot of this is gonna face inside of the camera. But I don't like getting globs on the front either. We're just going to work this piece into place, just like that. And now we can set the camera upright because that's gonna make it easier to do the next part of this. And forgive me if this is a little bit out of focus up here, I taped my camera lens so that focus wouldn't shift over the course of the eight hours I'm gonna be doing this. But what we wanna do here, grab our glue, put it in our brush, and then going to paint inside of these cutouts here. And that means doing that, we don't have to put any glue on this piece if we don't want to. We can just drop it right into position. And now we can move on to the side. This piece is not cooperating at all. Okay, just like that. We'll cut, I'll come back to that. There is, if you run into this, there are other places we're gonna glue this that will help ensure that that stays where we need it to. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab more glue in the brush. We're just going to, oh, that's too much. Just gonna brush into these large notches right here. And along these inside faces. Just like this. And now we can grab the other side and it just slides right into place like that. You know what I forgot to do? <laughs> this is why it's not going together properly. This is a big part of it. Let's take the paper off of this. <laughs> Now 
All right, so this felted side here faces the inside of the camera. So I'm going to undo all of that hard work. Uh, And now we have the camera body assembled correctly. There we go. That is a correctly assembled camera. Now what we've got to do is get into these corners and apply some more glue. But before we do that, I'm going to grab my 117B rubber bands. And we're going to hold this in place. Go. There's a little bit of an outward bow on that part, and I'll show you how to fix that in just a moment. Uh, all right, let's try this again. There we go. Now, before we get to that, we need to paint glue into the corners of the inside of the box, which will help hold the felt in place and also provide some added structure to the camera. This we can actually glop on pretty, pretty liberally. We're just going to take the brush and run it up and down in the corner and along the front and in the corner again. I'm going to take the tape off of this piece. I like to do the top and bottom first. Uh, I just find it better because they're the harder ones to do. And I like to get the harder task out of the way first. Now with the tape off, we can just take the felt that, over, that is larger than the actual piece of wood, and we just press that into place where we just glued. Okay, now we're gonna do the same on the bottom. Okay, now that we've got the felt back in place, we're going to just press it into the corners where we just glued, and that will help ensure that it stays where we want it to. Now, we're gonna do that again for the sides, and that's gonna mean painting over some of the felt that we just placed with glue, and that's A-okay. Just gonna paint right over that piece of felt. And then we're going to run more glue along the bottom where the front of the camera is, just on that seam. Now we're just going to use our fingers to tuck that felt into the corners. And one of the reasons we're gluing the felt into the corners like this is that creates multiple layers of felt along the seams so that if there is a little gap in the seams, then the felt does the job of preventing that gap from becoming a light leak. All right, let's do these last corners. Cannot express how much I'm looking forward to being done with assembling this camera. There we go. Very carefully going to rotate that. Now we have four rubber bands left. And we're going to double these up and use them to hold the camera body in place, specifically the front of the camera. There we go.
go. Okay, now, generally speaking, this issue will work itself out. If, it, if you have a, this little gap here is not gonna be an issue for your images because it is um, fairly inconsequential and there is all of that felt, uh, suede rather, protecting your images inside the camera. But if you wanted to, if you had a couple clamps and you wanted to clamp that in place, there would be nothing whatsoever wrong with doing that. Now, this is the top of the camera, so we're going to need to keep track of that here for a minute. And what we're gonna do next is we're going to install that wool gasket. That's this part, remember? We have not installed that yet because we need to wait until we are this far along. In the other cameras, if you bought more than just this one, the assembly of the wool gasket part's a little bit different. So I'm going to start by putting a couple decent beads of glue along the top and bottom because at this point we don't really have to worry so much about whether or not this wood's going to uh, warp because everything's being held in place. There we go. We're going to grab these shorter pieces. They're the same, so it doesn't matter which side they go on, top or bottom. We're just going to slide those right there and right there. Up here is the top. This is the side with the bubble level. The side with the bubble level gets the, the, the end of this strip that has two notches. The side with the tripod socket gets the end of the strip that has one. And that's very, very important. You do want to glue over those laser etched lines. They're, they're just there to help you under, remember which side of the, uh, this, this film holder mount faces outward and to ensure that you get the uh, wool lined up properly. At this point, we're far enough along in that stage that you should have that under control. We're going to feed the wool underneath the felt, underneath the rubber bands here. And the reason that you want to glue up over the entire thing is you want to get these little triangular ends glued up very well. And that little piece right there also needs to be glued up very well. If it's not, uh, you will run into issues with loading and with, uh, with your film backs, film holders rather. So we will slide that right there. This, this camera design, more than the others, requires that the wool gasket be very uh, precisely placed for light proofing. So you wanna make sure that you don't have any gaps in the top there between the two pieces of wool. I did experiment with using rectangles here, however, the issue was these little pieces right there, that they kept being a problem. So we're just going to push these top and bottom pieces in until they marry up very nicely, push them to the edges, and that wool gasket is done. So the way that this works and the way that this has to be done correctly is the 4x10 can only be loaded top down. This wider notch is where the 4x10 light seal rests. The 4x5, the when this camera is used as a diptych, gets two 4x5 holders. We can take these rubber bands off and reuse them if we'd like. Now the 4x5 holders go into here, and I'll show you in greater detail how this works when I do the full video manual for operating this camera. But they rest here and here. And their little bevels right here line up with that and that. So that's why this specific shape is this way. It was a, a, a much harder geometry to assemble than it should have been. But it's done now, and everyone is happy. At least I am. 
Now, the next thing we've got to do is we're going to put this piece in. So we're going to make sure that the 4x10 holder slides in and out smoothly. Because if it doesn't, there we go, we have a problem. Very nice. I'm happy with that. Now we're going to put this piece in. And there are some laser lines here and here. Those line up with these pieces here and here. We're going to grab our 9 inch length of shock cord. I'm going to turn this around so I can get a better view, better angle on this for you. So what you're going to do is you're going to feed the shock cord up through this hole. Then we're going to grab one of these. You're going to feed it through there. We're going to grab the other one. And you're going to feed it down through this, the top of it. And then through that other hole. Now I do find it a little bit easier to leave those kind of hanging off to the side for a second, but we are still going to have to get these mounted up like this. This is how they mount. You don't want the shock cord to fall back through the hole just yet. That's always a pain. Okay, so there we go. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to figure out the tension that we want on this, the resistance or tension that we want on this shock cord. That feels pretty good. Okay, about like that. We want it to, we want it to kind of pull these back. It doesn't, we don't necessarily want these flying off to the point that if our hand's in the way, it's gonna hurt. But I'm gonna mark this part of the shock cord with my thumb and finger and hold it very tightly so that when I tie this knot, I can get it into the right spot. There we go, just like that. All right, now this is where the small pieces of shock cord come in. Oof. What we want to do with the small pieces of shock cord, we want to feed it up through one of these holes, doesn't matter which one, and we're going to feed it back down through the other hole. Again, doesn't really matter which one. We're going to pull a length of it out here, and we're going to tie a knot. So what we've done is we've created a loop. When this holder is in place, that loop secures this arm, and this is what we want. Now we're going to repeat it on this side. There we go. That is how we assemble that part of it. And when you see the full instruction manual on how to use this camera, it's going to make a lot of sense as to why it's done this way uh, because in why it's different than the other cameras. For the time being, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this off to the side. And you can see that little bit of warping we had right here has already gotten itself compressed out of the system. But I'm going to set this off to the side, let the glue dry. And guess what? If you do the same thing, in an hour or two, you'll have a completed camera. Thank you for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about checking these every couple of days and answering questions. If you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos, and if I have the technical know-how and equipment, I'm more than happy to make those. One last thing, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I gotta get up, Steinbeck. I have to turn off the camera.